the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We welcome those who join us this morning for this Mass on the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. In our Gospel today, we hear the words of Jesus to an invitation to come and see where he lives. And that's the invitation he gives to us every time we come to Mass. Come and see his teaching, his love, his grace for all of us. And so as we do this, we acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you are lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. You open for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise God. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading is a reading from the book of Samuel. Samuel was lying in the sanctuary of the Lord where the ark of God was. When the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, he answered, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am since you called me. Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Once again the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am since you called me. He replied, I did not call you my son. Go back and lie down. Samuel had as yet no knowledge of the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. Once again the Lord called the third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am since you called me. Eli then understood that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. And he said to Samuel, Go and lie down. And if someone calls, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord then came and stood by, calling as he had done before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, and let no word of his fall to the ground. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. He put a new song into my mouth, praise of our God. 
Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifices and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim, instead, here am I. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law in the depth of my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The body is not meant for fornication. It is for the Lord and the Lord for the body. God who raised the Lord from the dead will by his power raise us up too. You know surely that your bodies are members making up the body of Christ. Anyone who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Keep away from fornication. All the other sins are committed outside the body, but to fornicate is to sin against your own body. The body you know is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you since you received him from God. You are not your own property. You have been bought and paid for. That is why you should use your body for the glory of God. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As John stood with two of his disciples, Jesus passed, and John stared hard at him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned round, saw them following, and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means teacher, where do you live? Come and see, he replied. So they went and saw where he lived and stayed with him the rest of the day. It was about the tenth hour. One of these two who became followers of Jesus after hearing what John had said was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Early next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. They took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Kephas, meaning rock. The Gospel of the Lord. Hannah was a woman in her forties who had not been blessed with a child. She was aware of the taunts of others, real or imagined, but she felt the pain of not giving birth to a child greatly. And so she prayed earnestly to God and pleaded with God to bless her with a child. God answered her prayer and she gave birth to a baby boy. And she called him Samuel, Samuel, which means heard by God. Her prayer had been heard by God. And that's the Samuel we hear about in the first reading today from the book of Samuel. He went on to become a great prophet in the history of Israel. Hannah dedicated his life to God as promised. And she sent him to Eli to be his master and teacher in the wisdom and ways of God. And that's the background for the first reading today we have in our Mass. 
Samuel is a young boy, young man, when he is disturbed in his sleep three times by a voice. And he doesn't recognize the voice. He doesn't understand why it's happening to him. And three times he goes to his master, Eli, to ask him what he should do. Eli, in the third time, realizes that it's God speaking to Samuel. He gives him the advice to use the words next time it happens. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And so it happens again, and Samuel uses the words that Eli has given to him. He says, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. It's a beautiful story. And Samuel goes on to become one of the great prophets of the Old Testament and listens carefully to the word of God and understands what God is saying to him. Sometimes in our lives, we find prayer difficult. We find it difficult to understand what God is responding to how he is answering our prayer. We sometimes maybe even feel he's not answering it at all. And so maybe it is very appropriate that we end our prayer each time of petition that we ask God for his care and needs, our needs. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening, so that we will understand God's response to our prayer. The Creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, Look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayer of the faithful. Let us bring our needs and the needs of our parish community before the Lord in prayer. He will grant us what is good. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and those whom with him preach and teach the word of God to us. May we respond with faith and trust. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In this Church Unity Week, we pray for our neighbours who are of other Christian denominations, that we can be united in prayer with them following Christ's way as given to us in the Scriptures. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the suffering peoples of the world who are homeless and persecuted, especially those who have been persecuted because of their religious beliefs. Lord, bring them peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the elderly and the vulnerable in our society. 
May they know the love and support of those around them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for people who are fearful and anxious for their health and the health of their families as the COVID virus continues to take lives. We pray for families whose livelihood is affected by the loss of earnings and those whose businesses have been destroyed. Lord, sustain them and bring relief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occurred at this time. Recently deceased, Robert Gillen, Vivian Wheatley of England, Jerry Agnew, the month's mind of William Allen and the first anniversary of Father Conburn and all those named in the bulletin. May they be at peace in the loving and forgiving presence of God and Mary, our mother. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a moment we pray for our own intention, whatever concern we may have that we present to God today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I offer this Mass today for all parishioners and those joining us that God will protect and offer them his grace at all times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our loving Father, we offer these in all our prayers through your Son, Jesus, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whatever the memorial of the sacrifices is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from ending death. By rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dew fall, so they may come for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Noel our Bishop, and all the clergy. <clears throat> Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed Apostles, St. Congal, St. Ignatius, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, that in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I would ask you to listen to a short video 
of the, with words of thanks from the Vince de Paul conferences in our parish as in response to the Christmas appeal that you gave them. Thank you, Father Emerson, for allowing us to say a few words here today. Hello everyone, my name is Catherine Daly and I'm a volunteer member of the St Congles Conference of the Society of St Vincent de Paul. I'm here to speak to you today on behalf of both the St Congles Conference and the St Joseph's Conference to express our thanks to you for your overwhelming response to our Christmas appeal. When we launched the appeal at the beginning of November, we really didn't know what to expect and we were worried about how things would work. Because of the pandemic, it was essential for us to work in a way that kept the members of our community and their families safe, and at the same time kept our volunteers and their families safe. And for that reason, the whole approach had to be different, and indeed we had to start the appeal a month early. But despite that, and because of you, we were able to provide vouchers for gifts and food to hundreds of families and individuals in our community in a safe way and in plenty of time for parents to be able to purchase presents for their children for Christmas. While the vast majority of vouchers were delivered at the beginning of December, we continued to receive requests for help right up until Christmas Eve and we were able to respond to all of those. The reason that we wanted to take this opportunity to speak to you today was to tell you direct that your kindness and your generosity made a real difference to hundreds of families and individuals in our community over the Christmas period and we want to thank you for that. Of course, as we continue to live with the impact of the coronavirus pandemic, many people in our community will face financial difficulty and hardship over the coming weeks and months. People may have reduced levels of income, but no reduction in expenditure. They may be facing additional costs simply by the fact of being at home all day, or indeed it could be for any number of reasons. In that respect, we want to let you know that we have secured funding from the National Lottery Communities Fund to provide assistance to those in our community directly affected by the impact of the pandemic. So if you are facing financial hardship as a result of the pandemic and are in need of help, please do not hesitate to contact us on the St Vincent de Paul helpline and we will do everything we can to try to help you. The helpline numbers for both the St Congols Conference and the St Joseph's Conference are published in the Parish Bulletin. Also, if you know someone who is affected by the impact of the pandemic, please feel free to share this information with them so that they know that this help is available. And of course, all communication with all individuals would be on a completely confidential basis. Finally, in the context of the current ongoing restrictions, we are unable to hold our weekly church door collections. Nonetheless, the need in our community continues throughout the year. If you are able and you would like to make a donation to St Vincent de Paul, for the St Congolos Conference, this can be done by a single donation or a weekly or monthly standing order to the St Vincent de Paul bank account for St Congolos, and the bank account details are published in the parish bulletin. Or if you would like to make a donation to the St Joseph's Conference, this can be done by leaving an envelope at the parochial house marked for the attention of St Joseph's St Vincent de Paul. I want to thank you for your time today and extend our best wishes to all of you for a very happy and healthy new year. Thank you. And just before the final blessing, on behalf of the parish, to thank all members of the Vincent de Paul Conferences for their excellent work in helping care for those in need and find themselves in difficult circumstances at this time. And thank you for your support to them. Finally, just to say that uh, you may know Father James was found positive for the COVID earlier in the week and is in self-isolation at the moment. He's making a good recovery and we hope and pray for him and for all who suffer from COVID they will make full recoveries. The Lord be with you. 
bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless all of us today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Now enter into the Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was homeless, you opened your door. When I was naked, you gave me your coat. Now enter into the home of my Father, whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people.